Today we are going to do uh, various types of differential equations. And the first one, the easiest one, is separable. These are differential equations of the following form. y prime equals a function of x times another function of y. And the way you solve this is by dividing g of y to the other side. You have, so you have g of y, y prime equals to f of x. And uh, <clears throat> once you have that, then you can integrate both sides by dx. And uh, since the right side is a function of x, uh, if this is given explicitly, you, you should be able to integrate this, right? The left side, however, uh, <clears throat> you should recognize that this one y prime dx is really <coughs> dy, right? So, <coughs> see, when you, when you do uh, u substitution, for example, if you do u substitution as u equals to y, then what is du? You first have to differentiate y, and then you put dx, right? You put the derivative times dx. That's how you do the u substitution. Yeah, hopefully you remember that. Yeah. So uh, <coughs> uh, you can either think of it as 1 over g of u du, or you can just say uh, it, it's 1 over gy dy. So uh, that way you can integrate because this is a function of y. <coughs> so, so this is what we call separable differential equations. And if you happen to have a differential equation that looks like this, then you can apply this strategy to solve. So let me show you an example. Uh, the simplest one I can think of is example one. <coughs> y prime equals to say something like 3xy. <coughs> okay. Uh, so you do see that it's a function of x. 3x is a function of x. y itself is a function of x, which you can, uh, you can rewrite as function of x times function of y, right? In that case, what's our strategy? Divide y. Divide this part to the other side. So you get 1 over y. Uh, and and uh, if, if this reasoning, y prime dx is equal to dy, if this reasoning is not so uh, clear to you, then another way to view this is to rewrite this, in, this using the Leibniz notation. The Leibniz notation for y prime is dy dx, right? These are just two of the same thing. This is a notation uh, invented by Newton. This is another notation for derivatives invented by Leibniz, and often this is this makes things easier to understand. Okay? So I divided by y and just rewrote this using the Leibniz notation, and I have 3x. <coughs> and then after that, I integrate. Let's just integrate both sides. And you can readily see that dx dx cancels, and you're just integrating 1 over y by dy. What is that? ln of y. And that's equal to 1 half x squared. Or 3 over 2 x squared. And then you have to write plus c. But you only need to do it on one side. Okay? Uh, plus C doesn't have to be appearing at both sides. All you're saying is that because these two derivatives are equal, they are antiderivatives should equal up to a constant difference. That's, that's what it means, right? If you have two functions whose derivatives are the same, what do you know about their original functions? 
they're di different just by a constant, okay? So that, that's why I'm trying to write. Now, <clears throat> we still have to solve this for y, and the way you solve this for y is by taking, raising it over uh, power of e, <coughs> raising it to a power over e, and then e and ln cancel, then you get y equals to e to the 3 over 2x squared plus c. Um, now, <coughs> you may have noticed that I, I got rid of the, the absolute value. Uh, I, I shouldn't really be doing that, but if you get rid of the absolute value, this could be plus or minus. Uh, so you could write plus or minus of this, but uh, there's a better way to express this. The better way to express this is to rewrite this as a sum of two things. Uh, maybe I'm running out of room here, so let me rearrange this part. So you can rewrite that single expression as e to the 3 over 2x squared times e to the c, right? because addition of two exponents, the same as multiplying these two. <coughs> and then uh, because c is some arbitrary value that, that can be anything, you have, I mean, whatever this c is, uh, this is a solution to this differential equation. By the way, differential equations have functions as its solutions, and if you only give the differential equations itself, it will always have a free parameter. In fact, the number of free parameters should be equal to the number of the order of differential equation. This is a first order differential equation. Therefore, you should expect to see one undetermined coefficient, which can be free. Okay? Now, if you, in addition, provide a condition like y of 0 should be 3 or something like that, then that can uh, nail down uh, this c to a specific value in order to satisfy that extra condition. But for us, it should have this undetermined free parameter, okay? All right. Now what do we do? Uh, e to c, because this is, this is just basically anything, instead of uh, writing this as uh, e to the c, why not just define this as some, just some c tilde? Okay. Yeah, you have a question? The, what were you saying about the uh, plus minus thing before down there? Oh, yeah, that, I, I'm about to address that. Okay, okay. so, uh, alright, so I should really put plus or minus because of this absolute value. But now look what I have here. Because because c tilde, is, c tilde is something that can be anything, I can just absorb this plus minus into c tilde, right? So if I needed this, this c tilde to be, uh, if, if this was a negative of 3, for example, if this had to be negative 3, I can just set c tilde to be negative 3, right? So in other words, uh, I can just redefine plus or minus some sign of e to the c as the c tilde. So, so what I'm trying to say is that this solution is really this or minus of this. There are two kinds of solutions. But <coughs> by incorporating the c tilde, I can put e to the c with the sign as this new c tilde. Okay. So the plus so, minus goes with the C instead yeah, of Yes, it just gets absorbed in there. Okay? And uh, <clears throat> we'll be doing this uh, many, many times. And, and at some point, you, you're going to understand this process of just redefining our free parameters so that the final answer looks simpler. So when we write down the final answer, we, we'll often just get rid of this tilde and say it's just some constant times e to the 3 over 2 x squared. Okay? So the, the result that we have here is really saying the following. If we want to find a function whose derivative is same as 3x times the function itself, all, all such functions that satisfy this must be of this form. It must be some constant times this type of function. Now, how do we verify that this answer is right? 
just plug them into the original equation and see if it works, right? So let's try this. What's y prime? To differentiate this, you need to use the chain rule, right? What do you get? What's the derivative? How do you apply the chain rule? You pull the inside function out and differentiate, right? So since this is nested inside the exponential function, uh, first I differentiate the e, e of the x, which doesn't change its form. And then the inside function has to be pulled out. And you differentiate this, which is 3x. And if you look at what you have here, this much is the same as y, isn't it? So you do get 3x times y. So we have verified that y prime is indeed the same as 3xy, and therefore the original equation is satisfied for this solution. Okay, that's how you check. But how did you... The, uh